Okay, welcome to this presentation on that we have headed health technology and elderly care. Uh, my name is Mats Rundqvist from the city of Westeros, um, and together with me today is Stephen von Ramp from Giraffe Technologies and Katharina Borgenfreina from the Stick. Uh, as Lennart showed us uh, shortly uh, before, um, the demography is our uh, biggest challenge within the uh, uh, welfare sector um, um, among the elderly care. Uh, and this, uh, these are the numbers for the uh, city of Westeros. The green line are those coming out to the workforce uh, in the next 15 years, and the red line are those above 80. And as you maybe know, uh, the, m the most users within the elderly care are above 80. So this is uh, uh, an increase with 50% in 15 years. And uh, to handle this challenge is, is really challenging for us. It's not only about money, it's also about work stuff. How can we take care for all these people in a good way um, when, when there will not be enough staff in, in the elderly care sector? Uh, in Westeros, we think that um, welfare technology is one of many answers to this challenge. And we try to address the field in several ways. We try to be users uh, of, elderly, of uh, welfare technology in our elderly care. Uh, for example, those solutions that, that will be presented later here. We also try to enable our citizens to, to take their own responsibility. Uh, there are a lot of solutions that could be bought and used by, by the indiv individuals themselves, and we believe that we as a municipality have to help uh, the providers to find that market. And we also try to cooperate with innovators uh, to make the, their innovations better in a way that I will come back to later. So um, with that, I leave the word to you, Stephen. Okay, thanks, Mats. I think some, uh, most of you have probably seen giraffe running around at various times here during the day or maybe at other occasions. The original technology came from Silicon Valley, uh, where the first prototype was built. We got interested, though, in this uh, home care, social care, elderly care market fairly early in the game. And we actually used the fact that we knew absolutely nothing about this market to our advantage. And the way we did that is that if you know nothing about the market, but yet you see the signs that there's an opportunity there for your technology, you have no choice, no choice, but to listen to the users listen to the customers, and that's very much what we try to do. And if you look at it from an EU perspective, this industry that's known collectively as ambient assisted living, which includes the aspects of home and elderly care, maintaining the time at home, there is a stated, very clear stated set of objectives at the high level that talk about what that means. It talks about quality of life, about preserving independence, extending the time at home, providing more confidence and so on, what we often call from a marketing perspective the soft goals of ambient assisted living, of social care, and also the so-called hard goals, managing and reducing care costs, unlocking the potential of the free caregivers, making the formal caregivers more uh, efficient, and of course postponing that time to the nursing home. So in taking the technology that you know as giraffe, Skype on wheels, a remote te uh, a mobile telepresence, and applying that to this kind of, this set of requirements for social care and home elderly care, it's very simple. What does the giraffe do? It extends, enhances relationships. It provides confidence, and it helps to unlock the potential of caregivers to make them more efficient, more able to engage in the care process, whether they be professional caregivers, hemschenst in Swedish, or informal caregivers, family and friends. That's the purpose of Giraffe, and the components of it are meant to work together, obviously, as a single unit. The Giraffe, of course, the software that's used to connect to it over the internet, and very importantly for the care organizations like Vesterol Stad to give them a tool, a database, that they can use to manage these. Privacy, integrity, security, extremely important. You're allowing people into the home, and therefore you must provide tools that allow the care organization to protect that home environment and keep it safe. But here's the important part of what I want to say. I quote Matt's uh, all the time saying that technology is only 20% of the solution. The other 80%, and this is our greatest challenge, it's not the technology, it's not the draft, it's not the software. 
It's being able to participate and help support the other 80% of what happens inside the care organization, inside the commune, to plan for a draft implementation, to do the economic modeling, to uh, do the implementation. How do you find the right sort of elderly profile? How do you introduce this technology to the various uh, 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 stakeholders, you could say, the professional caregivers, the elderly, the family members, the, po the politicians in the commune, and so on. And there is an extremely important knowledge base of information that we have begun to gather through our experiences with these municipalities that is now part of the service. It's part of the solution, and we accept that it is our responsibility to offer that along with the technology to give these organizations the confidence to move forward. Um, experiences, focusing on experiences that improve quality of life. These are the soft messages. Uh, as anyone who has seen Giraffe knows, we've essentially not simplified, but removed the user interface from the person who's there in the home. There's nothing to do except sit back and take the visit. And from the caregiver perspective, whether you're a professional or an informal caregiver, the increased confidence, the peace of mind that comes from knowing you have instant presence, the ability to respond to an emergency situation, an alarm, or simply go in for a, a quick check to see how, they're, uh, how it's going in, in between other visits and meetings. These are the important uh, parts of the soft, the, the soft goal uh, of improving quality of life. This is some of the feedback we have. And then, of course, the hard goal, being able to develop economic models that the care organizations can use to understand how you save money with this. That's an important part of the tool as well. So our major challenges here are, in the development stage, the things that any entrepreneur faces. It's the funding. It's the development resources. And at the commercial stage, of course, it's the sales and marketing resources. And in this market, what's particularly important is being able to give customers, care organizations, confidence that the organization is credible and that you can move forward. It's, we have been successful with the so-called the so soft money, the grants, the EU grants, and so on. That's been very important for us. And that could be an avenue for an entrepreneur, depending on what, uh, what, what market you're in. For the home care market, because this receives so much focus within the EU, that's been a very... Uh, important source of funding for us. And at the commercial stage, of course, it's all about finding champion customers like Vesterolstad, building those relationships over time. Uh, and when you don't have the sales resource, find the distributors, agents, and partnerships. Um, lessons learned, again, these are easy to say, but they're hard to do. The deployments have to be real world. You can't bring elderly people into your lab and say, could you check this out and tell us what you think. You have to go into the home. You have to experience the difficulty and challenge of that environment in order to understand what you're really doing. And you have to listen to the care organization. And speaking of challenge, I want to end with uh, this quick video, uh, if it comes up. This is how giraffe is portrayed. Can you, can you turn the volume up here a bit? <laughs> this is how giraffe is often portrayed in the news. As a mean robot crashing through, death ray and all. And part of our challenge is to change that perception of robotics technology for use in this kind of uh, environment. And of course, we use people like Aina to help us deliver that message and show that we need to very much rethink what we think of as robotics and think of this as something that can enhance relationships, improve the quality of life, uh, not just uh, come crashing through the window. So, I'll hand it back to you, Mats, and uh, that's, uh, what we have, that's where we have focused. For Katarina. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Uh, I would like to talk to you a little bit about mealtime. Mealtime is uh, an area where a lot of elderly and disabled people are being taken care of today. Uh, mealtime is many things. It's uh, culture, it's tradition, it's social interaction, and it's also a time for getting nutrition and relaxation. Within dis the disability world, uh, the, the, uh, co the concept of transportation or moving around in a wheelchair is completely acceptable that you drive your own wheelchair. No one uh, questions that. But when it comes to mealtime, it's not at all obvious that independence is something that uh, is natural. So uh, this was the situation for this man here. His name is Stian Hemmingsson. He's the founder of the company Bestick. Uh, he has suffered from MS and polio. 
And uh, he decided that he did not think it was dignified to be fed by his wife every meal. So he wanted the possibility to eat by himself. And he thought that independence during meat time was so important that it was worth investing his personal time and money to do something about. So if we look uh, to the marketplace of who is being fed today, there is a number, a numerous of uh, diagnoses and situations which can occur w when you can't use your arms and hands. And this is just some examples of uh, uses we have. Uh, ALS, rheumatics, CP, stroke, polio, spinal disorders, etc. Uh, many of these disabilities comes, uh, some of them comes more frequently for elderly, but it's also for children. So Bistik is a robotic device, but it's uh, operated by the user. So it's, it's an extension of the user's arm and hand. And uh, the user decides for himself the pace, the amount, the, the, what, what to put in the mouth, and also when. And this is a huge difference uh, between being fed and uh, shoes by yourself. And the target for this device was that it should be fairly easy to learn, uh, easy to get start, started with. It needs to be flexible because all these users have different needs. So it has to be able to adapt to this and also for different kinds of foods. And the design was made with uh, uh, to look attractive and nice in a meal environment not to look too much like uh, uh, robo robots, to be honest, but <laughs> trying to stay away of the <laughs> arm, uh, sort of, and uh, be more smooth in the movements. And the value of this is, of course, dignity, integrated, and quality of life. So there are two studies that I would like to refer to that has looked into this, uh, one from Denmark and one from the United States. And uh, in Denmark, it's the uh, social uh, uh, government or municipalities that has taken this initiative. And uh, they looked uh, at it from both the user's perspective and caregiver's perspective. And uh, a common feedback from the users are, I feel more like a human being. I'm able to have a private conversation. I'm able to eat in my own pace. And uh, Again, uh, the caregiver's ex ex perspective, they experience less stress. Mealtime can be a very challenging uh, situation. It's a lot of logistics. It needs, the food needs to be warm. It's uh, a lot of things going on at the same time. So they thought also that we could have more equal communication between the caregiver and the individual. And, uh, but they also state that it requires a positive attitude from management to be able to be implemented. And the total duration of the meal time actually decreased in both of these studies with around 16 minutes. Uh, what that says, uh, it's, it's the individual who decides how long they want to eat. So, like Stephen said, we also have our challenges and uh, I thought it was interesting to hear because we, we meet quite often the question, well, this is taking our job. We are the feeders. This is uh, taking jobs away from us. So, uh, and uh, in healthcare, there's a lot of technology in healthcare, but there is also uh, a lot of groups of people who, who don't appreciate technology always. Um, so there's a lot of knowledge and insight, and also the possibility to really put yourself in the, the, the individual's position of being fed. How does that feel? How is that uh, experience? And it's also another challenge for us is that it's a very, very long time before the initial interest. People say, wow, cool, nice. And then before you actually have a purchase order, it can take half a year or even longer in some countries. So it's a very long time. And uh, how we manage this is that we work very actively with uh, training programs. We work with universities. We, we de will develop training programs for different uh, experts uh, like... Um, Occupational therapists, physical therapists, dietitians, uh, etc. Uh, we we work with uh, reference customers is so important, 
And uh, what we do also is that we introduce the product in several markets simultaneously, just because of the different uh, in a time length in the sales process. And just keep on talking and discuss the issues that we have. So. Thank, you. Thank you, Katarina. So if there are these great, uh, th these great potentials uh, and uh, so f low sales numbers for, for you, what stops us really to use the possibilities with this technology? Uh, is it because uh, immaturity in the innovations? Well, yes, sem sometimes I would say we, we as a customer meet immature innovations that, that are not ready to go to the market, but that's not the common problem. Sometimes there are innovations addressing non-existing problems. I will come back to that, but of course, then we're not interested. I would say a big part of the problem is within us, within the uh, care providers' organizations. Sometimes we don't know about the existence of these solutions. And then, of course, traditional sales and marketing activities are, are the answer. But quite often we d do know about the existence, but we are not sure about the benefits. And both Katarina and Steven has talked about the, the importance of providing us with um, uh, hard figures on how, how this can save time and money for us. And also both of them have talked about the, the importance of, of helping us to know how we can implement this. So I would say the solutions, and, and of course there is also skeptical thoughts among many uh, technology providers about the procurement regulations and that they should be the, the real obstacle, and I, I don't believe that really. So how can we move forward? We have to, to uh, uh, cooperate to make real user-driven innovation possible and, and to get really good solutions for the future. Uh, but we also have to look into more of needs-driven innovations. We as care provider wants to be more active in uh, announcing what are the challenges for us for tomorrow so that the innovators can address those challenges. Test beds, as, as both um, Lennart and, and um, Steven has talked about, they are very useful. And uh, cost-benefit analysis, which has to be... You can't make them yourself. You have to do them together with us because they have to be done in the real environment to be, to be, um, so that we can believe them. And of course, this implementation support. Can, can the technology providers do all of those 80%? No, of course not. But they can do quite a lot together with, with the first customers and together, together with the test beds so that the other customers can rely on, OK, if they did like that in, in Westeros, then we can do it similarly Within, within our municipality. And the, there are great possibilities within the EU uh, directive and, and within the Swedish procurement law to make procurement more innovation friendly. We don't have to ask for companies that have a 10 year record with AAA credit, uh, credit, uh, uh, creditability. Uh, we can adjust the, the methods within the law so that we can make business with small innovative uh, companies. Uh, and we can also use the, the method of uh, pre-commercial procurement or procurement of innovations where uh, Westeros are co cooperating in an EU project called Silver. You can read more about it on uh, www.silverpcp.eu uh, where we are actually procuring the innovation of robotics that make elderly more independent. So we are, as a proc procurer are financing the development process. So. Thank you.